welcome everyone to opening night here at Viking Stadium, where tonight your Vikings kick off the 2002 campaign on TV25 against newly attained rival, the East Lansing Trojans. With me tonight is Greg Turner. And folks, it's really easy for a rivalry to start when your opponent ends their perfect season as East Lansing did to the Hazlitt a season ago. In one of the greatest games in the area last year, the Vikings fell 24-21 on a last-second field goal to the Trojans. This game has all the makings of a classic tonight, Dom. One advantage, two for the Vikings tonight, Greg, is the graduation of Antoine Bagwell, the all-area back for the East Lansing Trojans a season ago. Absolutely, Bagwell, though held in check for most of the game last season, is an open field threat that the Vikings will certainly not miss. Uh, all things aside, though, Dom, the Vikings are trying to win with a new quarterback, Matt Peterson. This, though, is nothing new for Coach Otluski. That's very true, Greg. The last two times the Vikings started the season with a new quarterback, being Nick Shively and Conrad Bird, regular seasons they finished a combined 17-1, and one, so I'm sure there'll be no butterflies for the Viking coaching staff tonight. This one shapes up to be a beauty, and we'll be right back for the kickoff. Dominic Pecora with Greg Kerner here back at Viking Stadium. As you take a look at Coach Atluski on your television screens, the Vikings are ready to kick off the 2002 season against the East Lansing Trojans, a team that went to the state semifinals a season ago before falling to Fruitport, 21-18. As you take a look at Coach Atluski, pacing the sidelines, and you can also see the Vikings donning the new uniforms this year, a la St. Louis Rams of the NFL, very sharp. And Greg, what do you expect to see out of the Viking backfield tonight? They're going to be real good this year. I'm looking for uh, a lot out of these guys. And, you know, they're just going to be one of the best teams you're going to see in the area this year. The, the McIntosh brothers in the backfield, Brent and Brian, known as Big Mac and Mini Mac, blend a nice combination of power and speed in the backfield. Vikings look to once again be successful with the running game. East Lansing has actually been known this year, Greg, more so for size as opposed to last year. They played more of a finesse game with Antoine Bagwell. Kind of a wide open style this season, more maybe grit and power. As I'm sure you'll be able to see eventually, a lot of size in the East Lansing front line. We're moments away from kickoff here. Vikings the last four seasons, Greg, a combined 35 and one in the regular season. Some people say that possibly the league is down, but you put up those kind of numbers, you just have to wonder. You know, the league is the league is not down. We have traditionally four teams make the playoffs every year. Hazlitt, DeWitt, Fowlerville, and Portland are all solid teams. The ICL may have a grouping of small schools, but but everybody plays with heart. And it's not really a, a weak conference like most say. Absolutely. Trojans are going to receive. Back deep to receive for East Lansing is Anthony Kennedy, number 22, as well as number 12, Gianni Ferraco. Brandon Zilch, the star senior kicker, ready to kick off from his own 40-yard line. We're just about set to get underway here. Nice warm night at Viking Stadium. 
a great night for football. Absolutely. Rematch of last year's great playoff game, as we said in the opening. Vikings falling in the last second field goal. Heartbreaker, 24 to 21. And watching Coach Atluski on the news last night, his team seems all ready for a little taste of revenge. As Zilch kicks it away. Taken at the six yard line. And the Vikings pin him back at the 22. That was number 17, David Harris on the return. And East Lansing will take over first and 10. Hissong in on the tackle for Hazlitt there. Big boys all around for, I'm sorry. <laughs> Big boys all around for the Trojans, Greg. The key for Hazlitt tonight on defense is gonna be they have to penetrate the backfield and get back there quick try to get a sack on the quarterback or hit that running back in the backfield. Absolutely. A lot of size in the Vikings defensive line with McManaman. As ball's handed off, number 25, Preston Jones. Yard, maybe two. Bring up about second down and eight. Nick King makes the tackle for the Vikings. Nick King in on the tackle for Hazlitt. Gene Pitts under center, the Trojan quarterback. Hand off, off tackle there. Nice run for the Trojans as that was number 25, Preston Jones again. He is close to a Trojan first down. Brent McIntosh with the stick. Good enough for a first down. It's gonna be first and 10 for the Trojans at their own 34 yard line. with the pitch to 39 David Barker. Vikings contain well there. Not much happening for the Trojans on that play. Yard maybe two. Uh, good defense there by the Vikings. Uh, good first down stop for them. We'll see if they can do uh, repeat that on second down. Be nice for the Vikings defense to try to force some third and longs early in this game. As you know, Coach Atluski loves to control that clock. Pitts with a handoff to number 39 again. That's David Barker. He's up to about the 40 yard line. It's gonna bring him about third and five. The Vikings Barker, here. The here uh, I anticipate uh, you have to uh, play hard here. Long third and five, uh, long, th long third down here. Let's see if East Lansing's gonna bring out the uh, pass attack or if they're gonna keep the ball on the ground. Look at Coach Porritt and team helper Jeff Bott on the sideline. It's going to be third and long here for the Trojans. Pitts drops the snap. Loose ball there. We'll see if the Vikings may have recovered. And I believe East Lansing got it back, but nevertheless, they're going to have to punt it away here. It's going to bring up fourth down and six. And the Viking defense holds in the first series of the game. Good start for the Viking D. Way to create the fumble there, putting pressure out on the offensive line. Uh, make East Lansing punt it away here. Pitts look like he might have had some sweaty palms there, Greg. As now early, early in the season, new game, new season. Tempers are... Absolutely. Ooh, nearly in on the block there was number seven, Joe Austin. Matt Harney calls a fair, fair catch at the 25 yard line and the Viking offense will make their first appearance of the season. Smart play by Harney there, Greg, as the Trojans were penetrating deep on him, doesn't want to risk any kind of turnover here so early in the game. Harney's a, Harney's a smart player out there back in the, in the secondary and uh, returning those punts. He's uh, definitely one of the senior leaders this year for the Vikings. Look at Coach Atluski, ready to give instructions to Matt Peterson, his very first game as a Viking quarterback. And Peterson's first varsity snap is a handoff to... Looks to be like a Big Mac, Brent McIntosh there. All right, Bigger McIntosh there with the carry. Thanks, Greg. This is a gain of one, and it's gonna bring up second down and nine. Calhoun in on the tackle for the Trojans.
anxious to see, anxious to see whether Coach Atluski is going to want to ease Peterson into the game. Maybe a few handouts, see if he can generate a first down just so he can get some flow going. See the gift number 35. That is Brian McIntosh, Mini Mac. He's held up at the line there once again by number 25, Preston Jones. So each McIntosh brother gets a carry here in the first two plays of the game. It's going to bring up a third and long for Peterson. See if Coach Atluski will go to the air here, Greg. It's, it's going to be key for them to, to, gain, to gain some yards on second down. If they get stuffed on first, they're going to have to get a lot on second. Uh, they're also gonna, they might have to go to the air to throw on third down here. Absolutely, and with the first game for Matt Peterson, I'm sure Coach Atluski wants to avoid that as much as possible. The keeper, Peterson, he's rolling out looking for a receiver. Pass falls incomplete. Intended for number eight, Dave McManaman, who's getting some tight end duty in there. Play might have been a little short of a first down anyway. The first pass of Peterson's career falls incomplete, and now the Vikings will have to punt as East Lansing holds on the Vikings' first series on offense. It's going to be number three, excuse me, number 52. Brandon Zilch will handle the punting duties as well as the kicking duties. And that's number four, Paul Stoll, deep for East Lansing. Zilch gets away a good punt. There's going to be no return on this one and gets a very friendly Viking bounce. Down at the 32-yard line of East Lansing. So that's a fine punch by Zilch. That's about a... 42-yard punt, I believe. And now East Lansing will get their second chance on offense as Gene Pitts leads his troops onto the field. The Viking defense this year is going to be led by uh, Dave McManaman, Joe Austin, Nick King, Brent McIntosh, and Matt Harney. It's a big front for the Vikings post. It's going to spell a lot of trouble for a lot of opponents this year. As Pitts, little screen pass, pitch out to number nine, Ellington Field. As that play is good for about seven yards. Six or seven yards on the play. When East Lansing goes three wide there, they're, they're going to need to match up all three men on there. East Lansing is going to try to throw that screen pass all day, and if they don't have another man over there, it could be some uh, trouble there for the Vikings. Second and five for Georgia. Second and five for East Lansing. Pitch completes on his first pass of the game. Movement up front. Here's the pitch out. And in the tackle in the backfield is number 28, Ryan Widener. That's going to be a loss in the play. We're going to take a look, though. Vikings might have moved first. Apparently no penalty flag. The Vikings might have just penetrated the neutral zone and got back in time. And that'll bring up third and eight for East Lansing. Vikings look like they've got the uh, any kind of outside pitch or uh, any run around the outside looks like they've got sealed off. It's got to work on the middle and those pass plays. Trojans do seem to want to stay to the outside early. It's very true, Greg. Pitts now with the handoff. Goes up the middle. It's number, I believe that's number 40 for East Lansing. That's Brad Jones. Brought down by McManaman on the play. That's going to bring up fourth down, and once again, East Lansing will have to punt. First three series here, it's been back-to-back uh, uh, -back punts here. Or, uh, see if any, any, any team can get any offense going here. Looks so like far, East, East Lansing's the only team. Oh, this is a fumble. And taken down in the backfield. That's number seven, Joe Austin. The punt was muffed, and Austin read it, and the Vikings would... The first big play of the game will take over in East Lansing territory, first and 10. The Vikings faithful, this obviously pleases them. You know, head coach Jeff Smith wanted to avoid an early mistake such as that. Gets the crowd into it, now the Vikings take over in prime position to try to get the first points in this game. Those are the kind of things the Vikings need to uh, put some points on the board, some early turnovers. Peterson with a handoff. That's number seven, Joe Austin. Pickup of about two yards. For the Vikings. Brought down by Preston Jones. Bring up second. A long eight. 
to see how uh, Coach Alewski wants to use Matt Peterson here. Actually in scoring distance this time. Vikings have McIntosh lined up to the outside. Two back set in the backfield. It's the pitch to Minnie Mac. Or Kevin McDevitt, rather. Now that was McIntosh, I'm sorry, on the pitch outside. That play was good for about eight yards. That's going to bring up third and one yard. Big fir first big play on offense for the Vikings. There's going to be a timeout on the field. Coach Atluski will spend the first of his three. Obviously a big play here, Greg. Coach Atluski wants to get on the same page with quarterback Matt Peterson. Timeout, Trojan. Well, that was a great play there by the Vikings. Uh, that gives them some firepower. They only, it's about third and two. You know, not 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 a not a big play needed here. Just just another one of those typical Viking runs right up the middle is all they need. You think here maybe they should go to some play action or use their power back in one of the Macintoshes? I think with the with the way that first pass worked out for the Vikings, I think they should they need to leave the ball on the ground. Uh, give the ball to Macintosh, let it, or uh, Big Mac, let it, let him run up the middle and uh, see what he can do with that. You definitely have the blockers up front to be able to do so. We'll see what Coach Outlewski has in store. Even if they don't make it here on third down, they're, they're, they can't punt the ball here, but I don't, I don't think they can uh, knock down the field goal from uh, about 40 yards out here. So uh, if they can't get it here, they get another down. They get fourth, try and go for it again. That's true. That would be risky, a 42-yard attempt by Zilch, but Vikings would like to avoid any kind of fourth down. Just take a look at the replay here, and that's McIntosh to the outside. And the give to McIntosh to the outside there, and he's going to, I believe, be short of the first down. And that's going to bring up fourth and one for Hazlitt. So now decision time for Coach Outlewski. So the Vikings are going to go for it here on fourth down. That'd be my call, too. Looks like it. Fourth down, a yard to go. Vikings at the East Lansing 25-yard line. Peterson under center. Hard count. Peterson on the keeper. He's going to have the first down and more outside. So Matt Peterson, big play there. Converts on the fourth down, and the Vikings earn a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Looks like they're going to bring the chains in here. They're going to have to measure this one. So the referee's not so sure. Maybe he might have stepped out of bounds. It looked to me like he had it. We'll take a look, though. Maybe the official saw something that we didn't. Here's the replay here again. Peterson running around the outside. Let's, let's see if we can tell. It's hard to tell with the players in the way there. I think he's got the first, though. Awaiting the referee's finding here. First down. No, punt. Whoa, he did not get it. I apologize. And now the Trojans will take over. Judging by Coach Ford's reaction, I thought it was a first down for Hazlitt. And apparently Matt Peterson stepped out of bounds or was knocked out short of the first down marker. Now East Lansing will turn over. It's got to be frustrating for Coach Outlewski, Greg, as he had the big play with the punt that was muffed by East Lansing and now gives the ball right back to him. So the Trojans dodged their first bullet of the game. So early season jitters here, first game. You know, play, plays aren't going to be made as they're going to be made later on in the season. It's a tough break for the Vikings. Maybe they got a bad spot there. That's the way it goes sometimes. Is now Pitts, for his third series of the game, will come out on offense. East Lansing likes to keep it on the ground a lot, and there's some movement up front, and that'll cost the Trojans five yards. That's going to cost the Trojans about five yards there. There's movement. It'll be a far, false start against East Lansing. The first and 15 now. East Lansing will be pushed back to their own 19-yard line. Those kind of mistakes are going to hurt the Trojans in a, in a close game like this. A few of the penalties usually the better off you are. Also, too, East Lansing looks to want to 
run a grinding kind of style on the ground, and when you get in positions where you have to make up 15 yards instead of 10, it comes into play quite often. So now Pitts with a little hole here, first and 15. Pitch to the outside. That's number 25. Nicky, I'm sorry, number 25, Preston Jones. 25, Preston Jones. He gets the ball up to about 22-yard line, 23-yard line. Trojan fed to use a little deception on that play, spreading, spreading it out, putting the uh, three receivers out there. Quick man out of the backfield. Oh. We're going to have another penalty here. The play will be nullified, and we'll see what happens where the referees mark the ball here. So the Vikings are going to decide if they want to accept or decline the penalty and take the play. Looks like they're going to accept the penalty now. It's going to push back East Lansing a little bit. It was illegal procedures to call. Moves the ball back inside the 15-yard line of VL. And now they have it first and 20 at their own 14. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Trojans go to the air here. Pass over the middle, off the hands of intended receiver number 22, Anthony Kennedy. Pass defender on the play by number 10, Mike Pritchard. Unable to stay on his feet there, might have had a chance for an interception. Now it brings up second down and 20 yards to go for East Lansing. Second and 20, it's gonna be a long one for the Trojans. I expect them to Put the ball in the air again this down. 20 yards is a tall order against this Viking defense. We'll see what Jeff Smith has in mind. Movement again, and that looks to be the third penalty in this series alone on East Lansing. They're staring now at a second and 25. Moving them now inside their own 10-yard line. These are the kind of penalties that Jeff Smith's going to get furious at his team for. I know it's early in the season, but false starts you know, those, those, those are unacceptable. We look at the replay here. It doesn't look like anybody. Uh, that was the pass before. That was defended by Mike Pritchard. Now second and 25 from their own eight yard line, East Lansing. Trying to overcome three penalties in the first two downs. Pitts back to pass. He's going up the sideline. He has a man. Three yards out of reach. Pitts just a little too much on that ball intended for Ellington Fields. Now it's going to bring up third and 25. He had his man there if he would have put it put it on the mark. Trojans could have could have had a first down there. It was a little long. Vikings got lucky there. They're going to set up for a third and 25. You might see Jeff Smith here just look for a little five or six yard play just to give his punter some room to get it out of there, not, not wanting to punt out of his own end zone. Especially with that last debacle they had on the punt there. Absolutely. Looks like, looks like they are going to run it here. Got a reverse play to the outside. Vikings read it pretty well. That's number 10, Mike Pritchard, in on the tackle. He give us the number 17, David Harris. And now it's going to be about fourth and 25, and pretty safe bet that East Lansing will elect to punt here. It's once Too again. Great. 21, Matt Harney, deep for the Vikings. Two great Matt plays uh, back to back there the by uh, Mike Pritchard. This is his first year playing varsity here. He's, he was a golfer previously. That's right. Looks like he's fitting, he's fitting in very well with the, the Viking defense. <laughs> Nearly blocked is number 45, Seth Grua. Punt taken by Matt Harney at the 37. Nice little return up to the 32. Once again, the Vikings will start in, with great field position. We'll take a look at the uh, last play here. It's, uh, they're going to try to run it around the outside again. The Vikings have the outside covered all day long. A little, little trickery here. If I were Trojans, I wouldn't be running around the ball around the outside. The Vikings are too fast around the outside. Those defensive backs are... Uh, some of the best that Trojans are going to see all year. Peterson under center. This team takes over on the 34. Peterson back to pass. Southball swings it over, and that pass is caught. No, they're calling it incomplete. Looked like McManaman might have had possession and coughed it up. 
They're going to rule it incomplete. Break for the Vikings. Bring up second and ten. Yeah, that was, that was the correct call there. David, he never really had possession of the ball there. You know the Vikings recovered. You know, nothing we can do about that there. Nice hit there by the East Lansing linebacker. Takes a lot of guts to try to hit Dave McManaman in an open field. McManaman was an offensive lineman last year. This is a new position there. He's not used to catching that ball. Well, let's, let's hope he can get, it, get in the rhythm here and uh, make some catches this year. Fine throw by Peterson there, still awaiting his first completion. Pitch to the outside, that's number 35, Brian McIntosh. He's got a little room, as he's upended, not before picking up nine yards and setting up third and short for the Vikings. So that's going to bring up third and about a yard. Or about two here. Third and one. There's a Brian Magatox taking the ball around in the inside. He gets, gets it pretty hard there. He's a tough guy. He's going to get back up and keep playing. No question about it. As now the Vikings face another critical third and short. Weren't able to get it last time. Ended up costing them a turnover on downs eventually. I like the Vikings running around the outside here again. All right, all right, Fumble on the play. That's a live ball. And East Lansing recovers. Good awareness by Broderick Jordan as Matt Peterson was hit in the backfield. Looked like a botched play there. Almost ran into his running back, and Peterson was hit blindsided. Coughs up the football. Now East Lansing will take over first and ten. So you see twice the Vikings now have the ball inside the Trojan 35-yard line and fail to take care of business on third and short. Looks like somebody there missed their block. East, East Lansing was bringing a lot of pressure. Those people have got to be blocked, though. Got to protect the quarterback back there. Yeah, the Trojans were very fast off the snap there, Greg. Peterson never saw him coming. Now Gene Pitts. A little more room to work with. Hoping for penalty-free football this series. As he keeps it on the outside. Pitts spins around a tackle. Gets up to about the 41. Gain of three. Pitts created that play. Looks like it might have been a loss initially. Bring up Pitts second and seven for the Trojans. I've liked Pitt, Pitts' composure so far. He's a sophomore, playing varsity. His, his older brother was the quarterback a couple years ago. Uh, Jack, he, he, he was one of East Lansing's best. We'll see what the Vikings can do here. Gene see if they get a stop here on defense. Yeah, Gene doesn't look to have a lot of size, Greg, but what he doesn't have in size, he makes up with his mobility and speed. He likes to get it up in the open field, and with those blockers in front of him, he can run all day. As you see now, handoff. Plays bottled up by the Viking defense there. Close to the 45-yard line. Excellent stop there by the Viking defense. Uh, and David Barker on the carry for the Trojans. Bring up third down for the Trojans. Passing down here for East Lansing as it's third and seven. I don't expect the Trojans to pass the ball. They're having, they're, they're having good success on the ground right now. You see them try to run around the outside. They're, they're not doing so well there. I look for possible run up the middle Smith with a give almost broken free there it's gonna be good enough for a first down that's number 17 David Harris good call Greg as they go right up the gut up the teeth of the Viking defense and get the first down this is East Lansing's first trip into Viking territory tonight East Lansing's got a lot of size in that offensive line there the Vikings, the Vikings are a little bit smaller on their D line they've, they've got speed though Trojans come up to the line here. First and 10 on the Viking 45 yard line. Hard count, Pitts with the pitch. That's the 39, David Barker. He rumbles forward, looks to pick up three or four. Vikings, Vikings are getting their hits in the backfield. They're just not taking their men down. Could have had a loss there. They would have made their tackle. Brings up second down. Might have a stop on the field here. Ball is on the 40 yard line. Coach Porat looks none too pleased right now. It's the end of the first quarter, actually. And much what we thought would be a tightly contested battle, Greg, has turned out to be just that, as it is 0-0 after one quarter. Vikings had, had their chances inside the 35. They just couldn't convert a, a fumble and a turnover on downs on a possible, possible first down. But 
measured out. The Vikings didn't get it. Not to make a move out of that. They're gonna have to uh, regroup here. They're gonna have to. They're gonna have to make a big stop here. Uh, Trojans. Trojans are pressing in here. Where we're at right now, the Vikings have had two chances earlier in the game. In case you're just joining us on a botched punt originally by Seth Grua was tackled in the backfield by number seven, Joe Austin. Vikings ran out of downs there on a play that we thought was a first down. Actually turned out to be short of the first down. And the last time, or the, the second time they actually got inside the 40 yard line, Matt Peterson was blindsided, fumbled the ball, and East Lansing took over. Now East Lansing trying to generate their first drive of the game. They have it now, second and five at the 40 yard line at Hazlitt. Seems like they're gonna change directions here. They're gonna go the other way. Hopefully, uh, this is giving the Vikings a little bit more luck here. As for the first time tonight, the Trojans seem to be finding some room in that Viking defense. Pitts guides his crew up to the line. Vikings look like they're showing blitz here. Pitts with the give. That's 39 again, David Barker. Vikings aren't letting him go anywhere. He's bottled up for no gain or a minimal one at that. That's the kind of defense Coach O likes there. Uh, in the backfield, wrapping him up. That's what the Vikings need to do to stop this uh, Trojan run game. Vikings brought up the extra man to the line there. Did come into play and helped them out. Now it sets up a third and five for East Lansing. So this is a big down, big down here for both teams. Let's hope the Vikings can get a stop here. Uh, force the East Lansing into a punting situation. with the gift at number 25. Preston Jones going absolutely nowhere. Viking defense all over that. That'll bring up fourth down. There's a two yard loss in the play. And Seth Drew is on to punt now for the Trojans. Excellent penetration there by uh, Vaughn. On the tackle for the Vikings. <laughs> We're gonna go down to Tammy Coates on the sideline. Tammy, what do you have for us? Thanks, Dom and Greg. I'm here with Sarah Schultz and Aislinn Hayes, captains of the girls' tennis team. Girls, how's the season looking? Uh, so far, it's looking pretty good. Uh, we won against Charlotte yesterday, and uh, against Colt, we did pretty well. Um, we started off with a rocky start. We got second at the Grand Lodge tournament, but we're doing better. What's your next match? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's coming up next week. Yeah. All right, well, check out the Hazlitt Girls tennis team. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Tammy, for the informative report on the Hazlitt Girls tennis team, down, tennis team downstairs. You saw on your monitors there, Seth Grua with a fantastic punt, has pinned the Vikings down on their own four yard line. The Vikings can't afford to turn over here or uh, a tackle in the backfield. It's gonna push him back even farther. Not a lot of room to work with, but the give to the outside there. It's number seven, Joe Austin. Looked like he might have had something for a moment, kind of stutter step, and was taken down, maybe a gain of one there. Bring up second and nine, Greg. The Vikings, uh, East Lansing had that play uh, covered from the beginning. Uh, they're running the ball around the outside a lot here. Uh, that was a pretty obvious play. Uh, Vikings known for their deception. That play wasn't very decisive at all. Uh, let's see what the Vikings do here on a second down. See Peterson under center. Three back set. The give is to Brent McIntosh. And he gets forward to the, about the 15 yard line. That might be good enough for a first down. We'll wait and see the spot. And it is first and 10 for Hazlitt. That's the Viking run offense we've uh, known to love here in Hazlitt. Uh, run around the outside and come back up through the middle. A little unexpected there. Coach Atluski obviously looking to spread the Trojan defense. And it works wonders there as McIntosh gets the first down. Seven men up on the line for the Trojans. Man in motion for the Vikings. Peterson with the give up the middle. Not much happening there for Hazlitt. That was a uh, mini, mini Mac there on the carry. A young sophomore there. Uh, 
he had a good run in the, in the first quarter. That generated much power going up the middle against this big uh, East Lansing defensive line. Here up second and nine for Hazlitt now. Peterson rolling out there. East Lansing thinking that's a live ball on the incompletion. That'll fall incomplete and now brings up third and nine. Peterson's yet to make a pass, complete a pass in his high school varsity career here. It's not a good way to get things started off. That's true, that's true. However, it seems as though the Trojans are getting into the backfield real quick. Seems to be putting a lot of added pressure on the junior quarterback. It's a crucial play here for the Vikings to get some room out here. Maybe they only gain six yards. They get a, get a good punt, pin the Trojans back far. First down would be nice here, though. Trojans stack up in the line, pitch to the outside. Brian That's Brian McIntosh. Not too much happening. And looks like the Vikings now will be forced to punt as that play is good for a yard, maybe two. Well, again, the Vikings try to go around the outside there with their, their speed man, uh, Brian McIntosh. He ran a, a 4 4 6 out here on the grass a couple weeks ago. East Lansing looks to be just as quick, though. Trojans have been equal to the challenge all night so far. Vikings can't seem to sustain any offensive pressure, and now Zilch will look to punt it away. High snap into the end zone, and this is going to be a safety against Hazlitt, and East Lansing will achieve the first points of the game in uncharacteristic fashion, and they take a 2-0 lead. High snap and kind of mistake Coach Otluski will not be happy with. As now, I believe it's going to be a, a free kick or a free punt now for Hazlitt to East Lansing, as well as the two points on the scoreboard. It's definitely so something the Vikings can't make a habit of this season. I know I understand it's early on in the season, but that's a mistake that cannot be made. Otluski, none too thrilled there as you see him sending a message to his players. You want to win, and you want to win against a caliber team like East Lansing. Those mistakes are unacceptable. Vikings are going to have to uh, do the old uh, safety punt here. I'm not sure who's going to be punting it here for the Vikings. Doesn't look like they practiced this too much. Unsure of exactly what they're going to do here. If he can, you might see Zilch just tr try to get a high kick. He's lancing at the three middlemen at midfield. They have number five, Sam Vanderveen. Heads of that corp. Well, it looks like the high school rules you get to... Uh, you gotta take a regular kickoff here, but it's from your own 20 yard line. I mean, in this situation, I don't know if I'd rather punt or kick. Even if it's a short punt, you got a lot of time to get down there and hit the ball, maybe knock it out, create something here. Either way, a none too familiar position for Hazlitt, having to kick from their 20 instead of their 40, so look for opportune field position for the Trojans. Zilch with a high kick. And that's number five, Sam Vanderveen letting that go. The kick goes out of bounds to the 41. And there is a flag down. It's gonna be for uh, punting the ball or uh, kicking the ball out of bounds there. Normally that, that would give the ball uh, to the Trojans on the 35. Obviously they're uh, on the 41 here. They're probably not gonna accept this penalty. It'll only push them farther back. Presume the uh, Trojans decline the uh, illegal procedure here. Unless they want to make the uh, the Vikings uh, punt it here again. See what, I think see they're going to they're going to add yardage on to the original spot of the ball. That's another five yards. We'll take it up to the 45. That's an unusual unusual rule here for uh, high school sports. The college and the pros. The rule, as I understood it, was if the ball goes out of bounds before the 35, you just get it where the ball lies. It's being explained to Jeff Smith on the far sideline there, but he'll definitely take it. This team now gets five extra yards, and it'll be first and 10 for the Trojans at their own 45-yard line. Vikings can get a stop here on defense. Get something going on offense. They might be able to cash in before the first half. Well, it looks like some uh, movement there by East Lansing to uh, start that play. There's no call there by the referees, though. 
extracurriculars after the play. The pitch was to number 17, David Harris. You saw the confusion there at the line, Greg. I think East Lansing was very close to a delay a game. Running the hurry up offense. That play was good for about a yard and a half. It'll bring up second and nine. So we're approaching the seven minute mark here in the second quarter. Vikings trail the East Lansing Trojans two to nothing. And looks like Gene Pitt's gonna call a timeout here. No, you're not watching a baseball game here. It's really <laughs> two to zero. Yeah, Troy, uh, the Vikings were uh, punting around their own end zone there. Snap went over the punter's head. Brandon Zilch rolled out of the back of the end zone. The Vikings uh, are uh, Trojans get the two for the, get the two points for that. Two points could be costly down the road for the Vikings. Let's see what happens here. You see Jeff Smith giving instruction to his team since he would love to get a lengthy drive happening here, eat up the rest of that clock, and take them right into halftime, up two nothing, or I'm sure he hopes up nine nothing. Vikings just can't seem to get anything going offensively tonight, Greg. Well, the Vikings are, uh, they're mismatched on the line there. Uh, East Lansing's ob obviously bigger, and they do have speed too. The Vikings are gonna have to, they have to put a little, little bit more heart in this game. Uh, play, play with all they've got to, uh, break down that uh, East Lansing defensive line. You can see there a little bit in the background, East Lansing, they really pack it in, home or away. That school is crazy about their football team, and rightfully so. All right, second down and nine here. Pitts under center. Give to number 11. That's Broderick Jordan. Not much going on for him. Maybe no gain on the play, maybe a loss. Looks Mac to be like the uh, Trojan offensive line. Seems to be a little, bit, a little bit weaker on the right side than the left. A lot of uh, East, East Lansing's attempts going to the right side have uh, been doing nothing. Pitt's calling the play here. Third and nine. Let's see what the Trojans have up their sleeve now. Pitts in the pass, nearly intercepted by number seven, Joe Austin. Sometimes that ball comes at you so quick, Greg, you just don't know how to react. The Vikings will take it either way. They're going to get the ball back. <laughs> if Joe Austin makes an interception, it's clear sailing all the way down the sideline. Well, the Viking DBs have been playing awful good, awful good so far in this game. A little unlucky there for uh, Joe Austin. Later on this season, I'm sure he makes that catch. Let's look at the replay there. Austin gets two hands on the ball. And Seth Grua gets set to punt. Austin, penetration again, a nice high kick. And Harney's just going to call a fair catch on this one. Drops it, picks it back up. They're going to call him down there. And I believe that might be a penalty on Hazlitt. Looks like that's going to be an infraction of the, uh, the two-yard halo around the uh, the fair catch there, even though he fumbled it. That's can't, true. can't enter that two-yard two -yard halo there. Looks like it's going to give the Vikings uh, five yards from the spot of the foul. I wasn't sure there if they were calling him just down with that flag. But you're, you're probably right. It was a two-yard infraction. They were awful close as Harney was calling the fair catch the whole way. Who the penalty oh. is going against Hazlitt. Oh. Like, not sure what the call is there. That's unusual. Possi possibly for I believe, a late I, maybe I, a face mask. I believe if you drop the ball and then still try to return it, when calling the fair catch, it is a penalty against you. That might be what they called here. Something I can think of is they'll take it back five yards. It's definitely a new rule to me there too. Maybe I've watched a little bit too much college football. I haven't seen that one ever before either. Vikings lose a yardage there. But Joe Austin does his best to get some of it back as he picks up seven yards on the carry. Anthony Kennedy in on the tackle. So if the Vikings can get those runs the rest of this half here, they can, they can cash in, put a, put a six, and then a tap on that extra point, they can go into the half 
Leading 7-2 here. Coach Alewski looking for that one big play just to try to break free, get the crowd into it. Peterson under center, three back set in the backfield. Hard count. East Lansing moved. It looked like, and they're blowing the play dead. We'll see if maybe the Vikings might have drawn them. We await the, or we await the official's call. Looks like it's going to go against the Trojans here, but we'll have to see. It's going to be call. Offside the Trojans. against East Lansing. Fine job there by Matt Peterson. Earns his team a first down in doing so with the hard count. Ball now spotted at the 30-yard line of Hazlitt. Peterson to give to Brent McIntosh. He looks to cut it back in. He gets past the 30 to the 34. Down by number 25. About a four-yard pickup for McIntosh. It'll be second down, six yards to go for Hazlitt. The Vikings don't have the speed of Logan Barnhart or uh, Peter Ehring, so they're going to have to pound it out, pound a little bit uh, out this year, uh, run that ball up the middle and uh, wear down the defense. They don't, they don't, they don't have the uh, explosive uh, out-of-the-hole speed like they've had in the past. As you see the give to number seven, Joe Austin, Barrels forward, maybe a yard there. Looks to bring up a third and five or six. Get back to what you were saying, Greg. That's true. And even last year, with the you notice now with the absence of Dave Vitawa, you're looking for that guy just kind of break out 20 to 25 yard run, get the crowd into it, get the offense going. They think though that Brian McIntosh is potentially that back. As you talked about his was a 4.46 40 speed. He did the sophomore and it's a tall order. I'm sure he's ready for it. There's an injured Viking there. Looks to be number 65, Chris Thornton. He's being helped off the field. We'll wait a report on that. Obviously not good news for Viking fans. But the Vikings are going to have to send in uh, number 62 uh, to be, that's it's going to be uh, Danny Bird. So he's going to play have to play center for here for the Vikings. There's a timeout on the field. Taken by Hazlitt. Make sure now with this third and five, Coach Atluski wanting to put some points on the board before halftime. Trying to script a play that'll get his team that all important first down. Maybe a possible trick play. Coach O pulls out of the bag calling this timeout here. Pull the old famous uh, hook and ladder or uh, some sort of deception here to uh, mess with the uh, Trojans' head and keep them on their heels. We, we've been talking about how the Trojans seem to be getting in, getting a lot of pressure on Matt Peterson. Coach Atluski here might want to try to get him to the outside, maybe get him some room to throw if indeed you are looking to pass the ball here and get six points before halftime. However, there is four and a half minutes left in the second quarter. So there's time also for the Vikings to run their regular offense. We'll just wait and see. Uh, the, Vi the Vikings have gotten in them here. Uh, I've seen them seen them score in less than four in uh, four thirty-five. It's just a matter of getting that first down here on this down down. Absolutely. As you look at the East Lansing crowd, hard pressed to find an empty seat over there. It's now a big third down for Hazlitt. Peterson with the give there. Number 40 for East Lansing, Brad Jones in on the stop. And the Vikings go out on downs here. It's fourth down, and they'll be forced to punt. It's Brian McIntosh on the carry there. And that's number four, Paul Stoldheap for East Lansing. Hopefully uh, we won't have uh, another uh, high snap here for uh, Make sure Zochi can get up there and get this one away. Bring the Trojans deep back in their own territory. Hold them before halftime. Another high snap, but Zilch 
That looks like it's partially blocked by East Lansing. Taken by number 11. That's Broderick Jordan. Another special teams miscue by Hazlitt. Turns into good fortune for East Lansing. As another high snap seemed to cause that punt to be blocked. And East That's Lansing takes over now in Viking territory with 347 left in the first half. That's going to be a net punt of about two yards with the block there. Yeah. Not the kind of punt you like to see. You know, you, you look at the game, you have offenses and defenses both being evenly matched right now. The difference being the Vikings blunders on special teams. So Coach Atluski, I'm sure, is not too happy right now. Special teams win and lose games for you. Pitts under center, drops the ball, picks it back up. He's rolling out, looking for a receiver. And brought down by Joe Austin on the sack. Bad decision by Gene Pitts there. He was out of the pocket. He could have thrown the ball away without having to worry about intentional grounding being called, held on to it. And that's got to make Coach Jeff Smith crazy. As his quarterback loses sizable yardage there, takes it back to the 47-yard line. That's an inexperienced quarterback right there for you. Should have let that go. He's, he's a young sophomore. He's got a lot of guts going out there and uh, playing, playing quarterback for the varsity football team. Second and 19 for East Lansing. Have the draw play. Vikings snuff that out pretty good. Give looks like it's a Preston Jones there. Preston Jones, the ball carrier. Brought down by Nick King and David. And East Lansing, right after making the big play with a blocked punt, has in essence shot itself in the foot here as they face third and 19 yards to go. And like we were saying, with an offense not really based around big plays by East Lansing, it's not a position you want to be in all too often. I wouldn't be surprised if East Lansing keeps the ball on the ground here. You got good field position, they can punt, punt the Vikings deep and prevent them from, uh, from scoring a touchdown here. We'll see what they decide to do, though. Pitts play action. He's got time. He throws over the middle. Pass is dropped by number 40, Brad Jones. Play would have been well short of a first down. However, Jones just looked like he might have lost that. It is dusk. It might be tough to see with the lights being turned on here. So the Vikings hold with a net offense there of negative nine yards for East Lansing. And the Vikings will get most likely one more chance here in the first half to try to get something started offensively. Black punt would be real nice here for the Vikings. They'd definitely get them going on offense, get the crowd back in the game here. Look for Austin to the outside as Grua gets it away. High punt. Bit of an East Lansing bounce. They'll let it go. Lands inside the 20 to the 19. Viking offense will take over again. I don't remember the last time the Vikings were down. They, uh, the Vikings had scored no points by halftime. Uh, recall the last time was possibly the dome run against Fowlerville. They were losing 6-0 at halftime in a game they came back and uh, put, put the Gladiators uh, right where they needed to be in a 21-6 victory down in Fowlerville. Whistle looks like there's another timeout taken. It's going to be East Lansing's final timeout, I think. It's Coach Atluski looking to put together a drive here. Looking for something, anything really. It's really quiet this side of the field. His fans just looking for something to cheer about. Take a look at the Vikings sideline. I don't know what the Vikings have in their arsenal, but they might have to maybe just try some sort of shotgun formation, spread everything out, and maybe hand the ball off or try running it that way. Uh, uh, Trojans know exactly what they're doing. Much like last year's game, we're right before halftime, and it's another tooth and nail, really close game. However, lacking the scoring of last year's game as that was 14-14. Of course, you're, la you're lacking also a couple of big players like Antron Bagwell and Dave Fidua and Conrad Bird like last year. So Vikings are not in a bad position by any means. They just like to get something going offensively. I think he's going to take over on the 18 here. Uh, definitely wouldn't be surprised if they uh, 
try passing the ball here. For, formation does not indicate any, any sort of pass, so Vikings, they're a crazy team, though. We'll see what they try to pull out. You see Peterson with a counter, and McIntosh up to the 31-yard line. There's something for the fans to cheer about. That's a pickup of 13 and another Viking first down. Those are the kind of plays the Vikings need to make. Get the crowd back in the game. That was a solid fake counter there by Matt Peterson. Gets it up to McIntosh. Vikings going with a two-minute offense there, looks like. Peterson under center. Can't imagine if you live in Hazlitt why you're not here. Counter the other way this time. This time the Trojans equal to the task as Joe Austin going the other way off tackle to the right. He's taken down at about the 32-yard line. Gain of maybe a half yard. Time's winding off that clock. The Vikings need to make something happen here in the last two minutes. We're now under two minutes remaining in the first half and thinking maybe Coach Atluski might go to the air eventually. Just a question of when. The give now to Austin again. Joe Austin, the ball carrier. He stopped. Gain of about one or two. That's going to bring up third and long for Atluski and his Hazlitt Vikings. Vikings gained about uh, two yards on that play. Uh, See what they decided to do here on a third and long. You know, with the Vikings, they love to run the ball. They're going to go with a um, split out to the outside, though. We'll see if... Uh, Got the pitch to the outside. That's number 35, Brian McIntosh. And number 40, that's Brad Jones in on the stop for the Trojans. Vikings stay on the ground and get burned there. And looks like they'll have to punt it away with a minute to go in the first half. Got to, I got to question that a little bit, Greg. I think Coach Atluski might have wanted to try something there, at least through the air. It is late in the first half. Now also, you give East Lansing another chance on offense. It's number four, Paul Soule is deep. Especially with the Hazlitt's uh, troubles on special teams here. Don't want to give the Trojans another opportunity to score here before halftime. Good, good snap. Good snap this time as Zilch gets away a nice long punt oh. taken at the 31 by Stoll. Vikings pursuit. Get him at the 40 after a return of nine yards. Brought down by Matt Harney, Brought down by Matt Harney there. It's a good special teams read. We're going to go downstairs to Tammy Coates. Tammy, what do you have for us? Thanks, Tom and Greg. I'm here with uh, Captain Megan Kaminsky for the girls' cross country. How'd you guys do today? We did awesome. We were at Corona, and both the girls' teams and the boys' teams won, and it was so awesome. It was so hot, but we, like, all pulled through. It was great teamwork. That's great. How is your season looking this year? My personal season's looking pretty good. I'm not hurt yet, which is good because I'm always hurt. But <laughs> I started out with pretty good time, really happy. 20 seconds faster than last year, which is actually a lot. And everyone else is looking really great. We don't have any injuries, and everyone's just so positive. That's awesome. Um, who's your biggest rival this year? Probably Williamson. They're a pretty big rival. They've got uh, three really awesome runners. But I think that we have a deep enough team this year. We're all going to pull together. If we stay clumped and up in front, we're going to be able to do it. We'll All right, that's the scoop on cross country. Come cheer us on next week. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Tammy. Back up here in the broadcast booth. We see with 18 seconds left, East Lansing looking to take the 2-0 lead into halftime. As Pitts on the keeper will just run out of bounds. They'll stop the clock with seven seconds left at his own 45. I thought with a minute to go at their own 40, Greg, they might have tried to put something together offensively, but I think Coach Smith just wants to take the lead into the locker room. I, I put the ball in the air. I, I don't know if it's in the, uh, with the Trojans arsenal to go, uh, let's go deep right now. Uh, does, does, does Pitts have the arm? We don't really know. Let's see if uh, Jeff Smith gives him a chance to give it old Evo here. We know he's got the legs, that's for sure, but he is... Now 54 yards away from the end zone. Maybe a hook and ladder as you spoke of earlier. Some play of trickery. But we'll see. Two receivers split out. You can see Pitt the, tries for the quick hit. Intended for number nine, Ellington Fields. That's a little too high. And that'll bring up fourth down. 
I don't know if that's the kind of play I'd run right there. Quick pass. Quick pass with only seven seconds left to go. Well, if you don't make the catch, you're going to have to punt the ball away. This could be dangerous. Yeah, now East Lansing's in a position where Hazlitt's looking to make a big play, maybe a punt block, and they've come close on more than one occasion so far. Grua's just looking to get it away. There's four and a half seconds left on the clock in the first half. Good snap, and Grua gets away a kick. There's a flag down. We'll await that. Otherwise, a fine punt by East Lansing. Let's hope it's not on the Vikings here. It looks like East Lansing has a possibility of uh, getting a first down here. It is a legal procedure against East Lansing. Half can't end on a penalty on the, uh, the defensive team here. We'll, we'll see what happens. Coach Atluski might just want to get East Lansing to pump the ball for the sake of having another chance for a possible block, but we'll see what's going on. The Vikings do get the ball back at the start of the second half, though. Penalty's going to push the Trojans back five yards, and they're going to have to punt it again. Ball spotted back on the 41-yard line. Ball's going to be taken back to the 41 now. Wondering if Coach Atluski's wondering if possibly they'd put back some time on the clock. As the clock reads zero right now, you're just going to see Pitts take a knee. And Coach Aluski will suspend his final timeout. Possible trick play here for the Vikings. They maybe try putting two guys back there, see if they can uh, maybe a possible pitch off to somebody else, a uh, backwards lateral. Maybe they just want to make sure that they uh, make sure they catch this ball. Maybe possibly take a knee here and just go into the half, only down by two. Coach Port having words with his defense here. Just making sure they're ready for anything. And Pitts looks like he's just going to take a knee, and that is the case. So a very uneventful first half here from Vikings Stadium. Both offenses seem to have drive starting that ended without any points being scored. The only points we do have, Greg, was on the botched punt by Hazlitt. Shoot gives East Lansing a 2-0 lead as Vikings head into the locker room there. Coach Atluski might be looking to try to figure out something offensively for the second half yeah. as the offense has just been pretty much stagnant the whole way. Neither team has any yards on offense. Both teams seem to get something going here. If, uh, if they want to score some points, because nobody can score any points on offense right now. Yeah, it's definitely a defensive contest, to say the least. We'll have, I'm sure, a halftime show for you, I believe. If not, we'll see you back for the second half. As At halftime, East Lansing 2 and Hazlitt 0.
Welcome back for second half action here at Viking Stadium. As the Vikings look to improve upon a first half in which they were able to put no points on the board. East Lansing putting two points, but by the Vikings' own admission. So an ominous first half for the Vikings, but they do receive to start the second half and looking to get something done offensively. And Craig, what more can you say? There's not much flow happening for either team in the first half. Well, all I can say is it reminds me a lot of baseball. Slow, boring, and the score even indicates that too. Absolutely. Vikings are going to have Matt Harney deep, as well as number 35, Brian McIntosh. As East Lansing's getting set to kick off. I think the Vikings key, uh, well, both teams key here is going to be uh, score some points, get some offense going, find that end zone. Ne teams. Neither, yep. neither team has uh, mustered any sort of offensive attack. Now the Vikings retrieve from their own 17. Nice return there by number 33, Ryan Everett, as he brings that up to about the 35, 36 yard line. And a fine return, a good start to the second half for Hazlitt. First and ten, they'll take over. You saw Ryan Everett there. He's, he, he's a quick kid. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see him later on in the season. He's only a junior. He's fast. He, he's got the speed out of the hole like, like the Vikings are, Vikings are looking for. He just lacks the experience. Matt Peterson looking to improve upon first half effort. And to give up the middle there. That looked like Joe Austin on the carry, and it is. Gain of maybe a yard, yard and a half. Bring up second, and a uh, short nine. Looks like defensively there, uh, East Lansing tried uh, tried something new. Looks like they were uh, brought brought in one of their outside guys, trying to get trying to get underneath the uh, Hazlitt line, trying to trip up Matt Peterson before he even has a chance to to uh, hand off the ball there. Peterson again on the draw play. Fakes it back towards, that's number three now, Scott Casby with his first carry of the night. And he lunges forward towards the 40-yard line. Solid pickup of three. And that's going to bring up third down and six for Hazlitt. It's second half starting off just the way the first half did. Not a lot of offense, a lot of defense. Coach out long, long third down play. Coach Atluski looking to keep it slow, looking for that one play to break the backs of East Lansing. Third and six for Hazlitt. Peterson under center. And the give to McIntosh. And he's taken down at the 40. So I can stay on the ground once again. And they're three and out. And East Lansing looks to return here. It'll be number four, Paul Stoll, deep to return. Tom, it really looks like this game could come down to, to just one touchdown. I would be very surprised if e either team was able to get into double digits tonight. 
And Zilch is back to punt. Special teams has hurt the Vikings all night. So when they get away, it's a nice, nice boot there. Taken by Stoll at the 29, and he got the, has a little room there on the return. As he is rocked by a host of Vikings, but still manages 15 yards on the return. And his Trojans will take over first and 10 with solid field position at their own 43. Well, Vikings, until they score, they're going to need to stop every time on defense because who knows when that, that offensive possession is going to get them that touchdown. A lot of pressure, Greg, when your defense every series is unable to allow any points to be scored. And that's just a testament on how rough the Vikings offense is going right now. Well, the Vikings have been known to, uh, to have a stingy deal. Let's see what happens here. See the give to number 25. Breaks free across midfield to the Vikings 44. That's number 25, Preston Jones. Tell you what, Jones has had a couple of fine carries tonight. But doesn't seem to get a majority of them. As he picks up about 17 yards. It's up to the Vikings 44. The Vikings can't give up those kind of long runs. Especially if they want to stay in this game. I believe that was the biggest play of the night for the Trojan offense. As that's Pitts on the keeper, rolls out, Vikings. Oh, devastating hit there by number 10, Mike Pritchard. We talked about before those DBs getting to the outside very quickly. Prevents Pitts from getting much at all. Maybe a half yard is going to bring up second down here. Those are the kind of hits they need to put on Pitts. He might be one of those guys to take out of it. Rough him up a little bit. He might have to sit a little while. We're going to take a look at the replay here. Comes up here. Uh, Brent McIntosh. He just lays him out. Great hit there. So that's Michael Pritchard and uh, Brent McIntosh uh, pulling up the back there. I see the give up the middle there. East Lansing getting some nice yardage. That's close to a first down. It's going to be a little short, I think up to the Vikings 35 and slowly but surely East Lansing's moving the ball with some authority. Nice job by our crew there with that slow motion replay. The well, Vikings can't, they, 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 this is a key play, definitely a key play. They got, they got to hold them here. Big third and one here for East Lansing. Pitts under center. Vikings look to bring a handoff there. Looking to break free. That's number 25, Preston Jones with another fine carry. That's a pickup of about 23 to the Viking 12. And East Lansing posing their first real threat of the night. Well, actually would be spotted at the 15. It's starting to look like the Trojans want this game more than the Vikings do. The Vikings have not been able to shut East Lansing down this series. Vikings defense looking to show signs of fatigue here, Greg. Fatigue early in the first quarter is uh, not a good sign. Give to Jones again. He's got more room. He rumbles forward to the pickup of about eight. Looks to get about to the six or seven there. Preston Jones continues to impress. We're going to look at the replay here. Jones takes the ball up the middle. He just keeps going. Matt Harney's uh, with that speed, he's lucky to catch him there. That, of course, the previous play is Jones now with three solid runs of 17, 22, and that last pickup was for eight yards. Second and two at the seven yard line for East Lansing. Give to Jones, he's inside the five, rumbles forward to maybe the th three yard it's gonna line. Be enough. It's gonna be enough for the first down for the Trojans there. Uh, Looks like Trojans have definitely made some adjustments at halftime. They're going with a really quick count before the Vikings can even get set up to play defense. Coach, Coach Atlusi is going to have to adjust to this. First and goal for the Trojans. As East Lansing threatened to put up the first touchdown tonight. I'm really impressed with East Lansing's drive here, Greg. There's not the, not the way Haslam wanted to start off the second half. No question about that. Pitts under center, first and goal. Looks like the give again. This time the Vikings stopped Jones. Not much at all. East Lansing there didn't use, utilize the quick count there. They, they waited, they waited. Hazlitt was able to uh, adjust and make the play there. Looks like the quick count's working for East Lansing here. Viking tackle made by 
football is going to be spotted at the three-yard line. Ball spotted at the two, I'm sorry. That's second and goal. As Pitts and his Trojans look to punch one in here and get a two-possession game. Give to number 39, Furry Slancing. That's David Parker, rumbles in for the touchdown. And East Lansing with a first score of the game now leads eight to nothing as we await the extra point. Wouldn't be surprised here if uh, East Lansing goes for two. Uh, looks like they're setting up to go for one. Two might be the wise decision though here. Coach Smith probably, probably just looking to get the two possession lead. Number 60, Andrew Bracken, looking to kick the extra point. Low snap, gets it off, and dead solid perfect through the uprights. And with 5.50 left in the third quarter, score is East Lansing 9, Hazlitt 0. Viking offense 3 and out to start the second half, three straight running plays. And how does East Lansing respond? They come right down with the running game with Preston Jones taking them all the way. Down inside the five, until number 39, David Barker, rumbled in the end zone from two yards out. Impressive drive there by the Trojans, no question. If I'm Hazlitt, I mean, Coach Otluski, I gotta put the ball in the air now. I, I gotta get on the board. No, no question about it right now. Coach Atluski definitely might want to think about changing things up, maybe opening it up, keeping the defense honest. They seem to really be keying on that three-back set, and that might be playing right into uh, Jeff Smith's hands right now. A quick count uh, by East Lansing's really hurting them. They're, they're getting down that line. They're hiking the ball right away. Uh, As it needs to adjust to, uh, to East Lansing's uh, quick, quick offensive uh, play selection here. They're going to have to score. To win this game, I think they're going to have to score. They're going to have to score in the third quarter, right away in the fourth quarter, because both teams just held onto the ball the entire quarter. Squib kick by the Trojans. Vikings Muffet is finally taken by Brian McIntosh, and he's taken down short of the 20. And the Vikings will take over with unfavorable field position, first and ten. Vikings definitely look like a young team out there. They just still haven't found their flow yet. No time for growing pains in this league, especially when you're playing East Lansing. Vikings have hung with them step for step. However, now they need to counter East Lansing's touchdown. We'll see what the offense has in store. Peterson under center. Rolls out, looks to go to the air here. He has a receiver, that's Brent McIntosh. Takes a couple of hits before he's brought down at the 25-yard line. So that's Matt Peterson, first completion as a varsity quarterback. It's a six-yard gain by Brent McIntosh. And that's a good idea, taking the running backs, maybe putting them out in the flat. As you saw there, McIntosh can definitely absorb a hit or two. We know Brent has the hands. As you see here, Peterson, uh, Rolls on the bootleg, hits McIntosh. McIntosh plows over the first defender. Second one happens to wrap him up. But all in all, good play for the Vikings. Second down, four yards to go. Three back set for Hazlitt. Peterson under center. I see the give to Brent McIntosh. He gets up to about the 28. That's going to bring up a crucial third in a yard seen all night, Greg. Vikings have been struggling in this situation. Third and one, twice before, to no avail. You know, I hate to say it, but this, this play could uh, make, or, make, or break the make or break the game here for the Vikings. Give to McIntosh, looking to break out. And that was a touchdown saving tackle by number 22, Anthony Kennedy. As McIntosh looked to be off for the races. Nevertheless, a first down for Hazlitt. Ball at the 44-yard line. 
Here you're going to see the play again. Peterson hands the ball off to McIntosh. McIntosh just rumbles through. Just tripped up there by the defender. If he would have had that, would have been six for the Vikings. Give to Joe Austin. Nothing happening there to the outside. Gain of a half yard, maybe. Looks like the Vikings are almost starting to trip up on their own players there in the backfield. East Lansing's pushing uh, the offensive lineman right into the running backs. Parker in on that last tackle for the Trojans. 3.45 left to go in the third quarter. Vikings trail East Lansing, 9-0. On a first half safety, on a punt miscue by Hazlitt. And the first drive of the second half for East Lansing, all the way down to the end zone. Vikings looking to counter. Peterson to give the McIntosh to the outside. He's looking to break through. He picks up about seven to eight yards. He's close to a Vikings first down. Crowd starting to get into it now as they're sensing the Vikings starting to put together a drive, Greg. Brent McIntosh looks like the Vikings go-to man uh, on this uh, this series uh, place here. Uh, he's, re he's, re he's carrying the team right now. That last play was good enough for a first down. And the Vikings now first and 10 at the Trojan 46 yard line. Stick with what works, right, Greg? Peterson rolls out the pass under pressure, completes his pass over the middle. That's number 17, Ben Conroy. Good catch there by Conroy. He's another one of those basketball players. He's got great hands. Six-yard pickup for the Vikes there. They have the ball inside the 40-yard line, and we're going to go down to Tammy Coates on the field. Tammy, what do you have for us? Thanks, Dom and Greg. I'm here with Christina Favor and Corey Keck. Girls, how's the swimming team looking this year? Oh, Tammy, it's looking great. Uh, we already qual qualified for state in the 200 free relay and the 400 free relay. A couple of girls, Chrissy Hager and myself, have individual events, and our other seniors are looking awesome. Christina, what are you guys doing differently this year? Um, we're doing 14 hours um, of training for a week. We have four hours of dry land in the morning and 10 hours in the pool each week. And our team's a lot more focused this year. All right, that sounds great. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Tammy. You saw there, Joe Austin fumbles the football. Devastating blow for the Viking offense. East Lansing takes over now, first and 10 on their own 44. Just when things are starting to look up for the Vikings, Greg, a very costly turnover there. That's uh, something the Vikings really can't be doing at this, this junction in the game. Uh, so. I'm, not, I'm not sure if we have a replay of that, but it looked like he might have been close to being down. I wasn't sure, but nevertheless, Trojan football now. Pitts with the give. That's number 25 again. That's Preston Jones. And he picks up substantial yardage. That's Preston close to a Trojan first down. Pressure on the Vikings defense now, Greg, to really come up with a stand. The Vikings, their defense is looking awful tired. So is the Trojans there, too. You know, another mishap like that for the Vikings. This game's going to be out of reach for them. Vikings D certainly can't give up any kind of points there. Give to Jones. Up the middle. That's close to a Trojan first down. We'll see where the official spot is. Still think the Vikings need to get ready uh, faster there. Uh, when when uh, East Lansing comes up to the line, there, they're still on their knees and East Lansing's taking the ball. Definitely not a good defensive position to be in. McIntosh and foot in on that last tackle. Closing in on the final minute of the third quarter. East Lansing enjoying a 9-0 lead and the ball passed midfield into Viking territory. Give to Jones. He's taken out in the, in the backfield. Flag on the play, however. Brought down by Nick Yvonne. Looks like that. That's just going to go against East Lansing. I mean, Coach Atluski, I don't know if I want to accept that penalty. It's bring up fourth down for the for the Trojans here. 
the way the running game's going, I might go for it on fourth down and be able to uh, be able to get it. We'll have to see what Coach Al Lucy decides to do. Looks like the Vikings are going to decline it. It's going to bring up fourth down for the Trojans. Let's see what he's fancy. Yeah, they're going to bring in Seth Grua here. Obviously, seeing the Vikings struggles on offense, they don't want to give them any kind of favor. That was an illegal shift against the Trojans on that last play. A little confusion from East Lansing there. Looking for the right substitutes. They might need to take a timeout. That's going to be a delay a game, and we saw some confusion there, and that was the case. And now East Lansing will be pushed back five more yards. Maybe a little confusion there on purpose by the Trojans. That, that ran down the clock. They knew they were going to punt it away anyways. What's five yards going to be to them? Take, took, took 30 seconds off the clock. Suffice to say, either way, Greg, the Vikings need a long drive here, and they need to get, whether even three points, they need to get something on the board. There's about a quarter and change left in this game. Grua gets away. End over end punt. Harney is going to let that one fall. East Lansing will down that one at about the 26, and the Vikings will take over first and 10. The Vikings are going to need a stellar offensive run here. Uh, they had they had they had a lot going from the beginning uh, on that last uh, last series. There, uh, Joe Austin's unfortunate fumble uh, cost them cost them probably six on that drive. No question about it. You could just kind of feel the Vikings getting some kind of momentum started offensively for the first time tonight, Greg. And if this score remains the same. That turnover could prove to be the turning point. Peterson out to pass. Pass low. Intended for number 17, Ben Conroy. Bring up second and 10 on the incompletion. I'm just not sure if those kind of pass plays are what's going to get us any yardage here. Rolling out, running the wrong, running the same way on a short field. I think the Vikings uh, they need to go long and down the field, maybe over, over top of the middle or something, but those passes down the sideline aren't really going to cut it at this point in the game. Tough two for Peterson, being a left-handed quarterback, throwing off his right foot. Peterson give to McIntosh. That's Brent McIntosh. Pick up of about a yard, yard and a half. And they'll bring up third and long. I don't understand that play call. They, they, they run on first down. They throw on second down. or They, uh, they throw on first down. They run on second down. They don't get anywhere. That's gonna Seems may, maybe throw the ball on second, run, run on first, throw on second, throw on third. But uh, putting yourself in a big hole when you when you throw on first down, not get anything, and they're expecting a, they're expecting a pass on second down again. You run it and you don't get anything. You're in trouble. That's true. As you look at the Vikings crowd, waiting for anything to cheer about. We've reached the end of the third quarter. Score East Lansing nine, Hazlitt zero. Points coming on a safety and a touchdown early in the third quarter. Coach Atluski has his work cut out for him. As his troops now face a third, third and nine, and a big third and nine at that for the first play of this fourth quarter, Greg. Vikings, they need, they need to get a drive going on, uh, right here, right now. We only got 12 minutes. Game's down to the last 12 minutes here. Fourth quarter time. Vikings trail nine to nothing. Coach Atluski heads back to the sidelines. Might want to consider maybe rolling out Matt Peterson to the left here, Greg. They, they need to go on the long side of the field. They've, they've got the speed with McIntosh. If they can get him a pass on the outside, have him turn around, maybe he might be able to go. Especially if Peterson can... Uh, Especially with Peterson being the lefty here. Well, you look at the biggest play of the night, and you have McIntosh's 22-yard run on the last Viking series. Possibly putting him in the flats or just giving him the football here. Peterson under center, three back set. 
play action. Peterson's rolling out. She's got a receiver intended for Matt Conroy, and he is decked by number 22, Anthony Kennedy. Looked like that might have been before the ball arrived, Greg. No flag on the play, however. And once again, the Vikings will be forced to punt with 11.54 remaining in the fourth quarter. Brandon Zilch sets, the, Peter, kick, sets the kick it away. And Peterson's only got that one option upfield, and it's not open. There's nothing he can do. Conroy's going to get laid out every single time like that. The Vikings, they need to uh, give a try with a couple, uh, couple more receivers here or something. Paul stole deep to receive. Short punt there by Zilch. It's going to take a nice Viking bounce. Rolling, rolling, and finally down for the Vikings. That's number 21. Matt Harney will down it at the East Lansing 31. And you know Coach Jeff Smith for East Lansing, Greg, just wants to take some time off the clock here. The team has a nine-point lead. And Hazlitt, obviously, is going to be looking for the big turnover play. I don't remember the last time uh, I had the Vikings went, in, went into the fourth quarter with uh, no points on the board. I don't, I don't think it's happened in the Atluski, uh, Atluski tenure he's had here. Definitely not at home, that's for sure. Tough game to start off the season with a, a big school like East Lansing and everything. But it's their first game, too, and we got to make adjustments. In, uh, Vikings looking for that one big play. Pitts with a carry. Gives it off there. That's number 39, David Barker. Barker with the early third quarter touchdown that gave the Trojans the 9 nothing lead. Gain of about a yard on the play. It's going to be second down and nine for East Lansing. Vikings need to wrap him up at the line of scrimmage. That extra yard might cost him a first uh, might cost him a first down. It might be third and two instead of third and three. You know, tro gotta gotta get him when they hit him. Give up the middle there. That looks like Preston Jones. And indeed it is. He gets past the 40-yard line before he's brought down by a host of Viking tacklers. Jones carries the ball into the Viking line. Not sure about that spot there. It looks like he got a little bit farther than that, but the referees are going to put him down at the 39. Vikings will definitely take that. That's going to bring up a third and three, Greg. And if there's ever been a time for a big play by the Viking defense, now's the time. Let's hope their, uh, their, misfortune, their misfortunes with tackling are uh, going to help them out here. Aren't, aren't going to shoot him in the foot here. Pitts under center here. Pitch to the outside, that's Barker. And he is going to be brought down. Barker the ball here. Shot short of the first down. And East Lansing now will be forced to punt. Travis Fakey on tackle. He was short, he's short of that first down. That was good tackling there by the Viking uh, defensive line and the linebackers. Let's uh, hope the Vikings can get, get on the board here. Maybe get a good punt return or uh, some sort of some sort of Trojan mis miscue here and uh, the Vikings can put some points on the board. Harney deep to receive. Grew up back to punt for East Lansing. Looking for a big return here. Austin nearly blocks the kick. And Harney's just going to let that bounce as East Lansing will touch that down at about the 21-yard line. Show sure, Austin nearly turning the game around there with a near block of the punt. And the Vikings now with nine and a half minutes to go will take over needing an offensive spark and time is starting to become the enemy of the Vikings. Do or die time now for the Vikings. Uh, teams in the past have been able to pull it off. But they haven't generated any sort of offense so far. So hope the Trojans are getting a little tired on that defensive line and can run the ball up the middle and give the, let McIntosh do his thing. Might look to split them out here eventually. Give the McIntosh, bottled up. Looks like for a loss there. Brent McIntosh. Vikings need something here. They need, they, they need a first down here, a second down. Move the chains up. 20, 30 yard game would be excellent right now here for the Vikings. Trojans seem to still be sharp on that defensive line. I don't know if running up the middle is going to get it cut for him anymore. With nine minutes to go. Not likely as Peterson on the keeper is sacked in the backfield. 
brought down by number 11, Broderick Jordan, and number 40, Brad Jones. And things just seem to be getting worse for the Vikings and their offense. That's going to bring up third and 15 at the Vikings' own 15-yard line. There's eight and a half minutes to go. Obviously, the play will be to the air here. It's just a question of where and who to. What? Vikings keep it on the ground here. That's number 35, Brian McIntosh. Get some sizable yardage. However, at this juncture of the game, it's costly because it brings up a fourth down, and with eight minutes to go and trailing by nine, has it left to punt it away. Probably the wise thing to do here is punt. I don't know. This, this situation in the game, Hazlitt hasn't had much offense. Fourth, fourth and two. Maybe they'll try some trickery here or something. Looks like Keith Lance is prepared for that, but we'll see. A little bit of a high snap. Zilch gets a nice punt away. Goes out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. Wint took that one a little bit towards the left sideline. And it's going to be first and 10 for East Lansing, Greg. And they're just milking the clock. They're perfectly content with the way this game is going. The Vikings aren't getting any kind of offensive rhythm going if they fail yet again to get a first down in that last series. Coach Atluski might have to burn some of his timeouts here to keep the Trojans uh, at bay here because I'm sure they're going to run the ball. Chance of let's go blue from the cheerleaders. takes his team to the line. He's got the bootleg keeper there. Vikings, loose ball there, but it goes out of bounds, unfortunately. Well, the there's Vikings. a possible holding there. Re referees, flags have definitely stayed in their pockets for tonight's game. Possible holding there on East Lansing. It is unusual, two running styles like this, we're yet to have a holding penalty. They're right there, you can see right on the front of the screen, he's got his hands around both of his arms, looks like that. Looks like a holding to me. It's a very good pickup on that one, Greg. As East Lansing definitely dodged the penalty on that one. And they'll keep it second down and 10. With a fumble out of bounds, a break for the Vikings. Small break at that. They'll stop the clock with 7.29 remaining. Break there for the Vikings, getting the ball out of bounds. Even though they didn't recover the fumble, definitely a break. Give up the middle, that's... That's Barker with the carry. We're going to go down to Tammy uh, Coates in just a moment as the Vikings face a third and seven at a critical point in this game. The Vikings need a big step here on defense. They can get this, keep themselves in the game. Well, under seven minutes to play. They do Viking, just that. Viking defense holds there on third down as the give was to Preston Jones. And now he's lancing will punt it away here as we approach the six and a half minute mark. You can just tell Matt Harney's just itching for a chance to get a good return. However, the Trojan punt coverage has been up to the test tonight. Har Harney's got the speed here. Let's see what the Vikings can do. Screw up, back to punt. Vikings rush in. Harney looks like he'll get a return here. Takes it to the outside there. Nice little pickup. Gets up, up to about the 30 yard line. And with 5.57 remaining in the fourth quarter, the Vikings will look to get something started offensively. Take over at the 30-yard line.
Expect the Vikings to go to the air. Here, possibly on first. At this point, maybe even second down too. At this point, Greg, you're right. You think they would have to. Time is running out. Give up the middle there. That it was to Brian McIntosh. No gain on the play. Vikings are killing themselves in the clock here right now. Why are they running the ball, up, especially up the middle? Maybe run around the outside, get the ball out of bounds, stop the clock. But running, running up the middle, and you're down, you're down by nine, 5.30 to go in the game. You're running the clock out, and the plays aren't gaining yardage as well. You really need to go to the air here. Peterson drops back. Looking for man upfield, that's number 35. Pass intended for Brian McIntosh. At least the attempt was there on that one. He had the man nearly intercepted by number 22 for East Lansing, Anthony Kennedy. He's been all over the place tonight. It's pretty obvious when Peterson drops back who he's going to throw it to if they only have one receiver. They put four guys on, there's no way McIntosh is ever going to make that catch, no matter how good he is. Look at the Vikings in the huddle. Third and 11. Big play for the Vikings. Peterson drops the ball, picks it back up. Fires, and that's intercepted by number 40. That's Brad Jones. Brought down at the 31-yard line of Hazlitt. And things just got worse. Peterson's pass was read there by Jones. Take a look at a replay there. Peterson botches the snap, falls down. He's obviously a little jostled, throws it right into coverage. He made a, made a good play, but uh, not, not an advised pass right over the middle, especially with a middle linebacker sitting right there. Vikings defense going to need to force a turnover here. They trail by nine, five minutes left in this fourth quarter of opening night here on TV 25. Also like to mention at this time, TV25 was voted number one educational access center in the United States by the Alliance of the Community Media. So congratulations to Brian Town and TV25. As the give to Preston Jones, goes for about two or three yards. And here I thought TV25 was just a sports network. Apparently <laughs> we do educational things too. Well, Preston Jones is definitely emerging uh, uh, Keith Lansing is one of the premier runners. He's, uh, he's got the speed and he's quick and he has moves. That's very true, Greg. He has come alive here in the second half. And you know that Coach Jeff Smith has noticed that as well. And he's been getting a majority of the carries as of late. It'll be second and seven at the Viking 28 for East Lansing. He gives the Jones up the middle, and he's gone. That's a touchdown for the Trojans. Preston Jones, Walker, touchdown, Trojans. Trojans might have just put the nail in the coffin with that one. 4.18 to go. They lead 15 to nothing. That hurts right there. That's, that's going to cost them the game. Jones gets the handoff. He goes virtually untouched into the end zone. I think we might have jinxed it by uh, sucking up Preston Jones to play before that. <laughs> we await the extra point here. That is no good. Break for the Vikings there. However, the damage has been done as now East Lansing leads 15 to nothing. Still two possession game, now needing two scores with a two point conversion to get this one knotted up. Tall order for the Vikings and tall order for a team that at this point you need to pass and the passing game just doesn't seem to be there right now. Not to say it's not gonna come together later in the year, but right now they just seem a little unsure of themselves, Greg. Uh, having Peterson stay under the, un, un, under the center, taking the snap, and rolling out, rolling out to the left, isn't uh, is, is going to pick you up big yards, and it hasn't completed a lot of passes for him yet, so far tonight either. 
Maybe some surprise plays. Coach Atluski's got cooked up here. See if maybe there's a starburst play on kickoff. Maybe some reverses. At this point, pretty much anything's game. Deep for the Vikings are Ryan Everett, Minnie Mack, and number 21, Matt Harney. Ball's falling off the tee there for the Trojans. They're gonna set it back up and uh, get this kick away. David Barker, line drive kick. Harney plays it off his arm in his own 10. He's looking to break it to the outside. He's caught down before he can reach the, about the 16 yard line. Looks to be a Trojan player slow to get up. And, uh, East, Craig East Lansing just looks to be too fast and too strong for the Vikings. I'd like to let you know that all games will be played game night at 11.30. You can see us on the replay on TV 25, as well as Saturday and Sunday at 12 o'clock and 7 o'clock. You see Coach Ford having some words there with Scott Casby on the sideline. I also want to mention to everybody, uh, before all, all the home and away games, uh, the big time tailgaters will be out in the parking lot, you know, tail tailgating uh, for all of your uh, hot dog, hamburger, chips, salsa, all your needs out there. Stop by, come out, see what it's all about. Big time tailgaters. Seat number 34 out there, Greg Bradley, is having some problems. There's trainers out there to work on him. Looks like uh, number six there, Adam Bartarison. That look kind of says it all. Yeah. Barry Mum has a sideline. Bigger problem right now is David Bradley. He's been down for two or three minutes now. He looked just kind of slow to get up at first. Looks to be conscious and everything. Just might have tweaked a hamstring. We're gonna have to hope this isn't a bad, this isn't a uh, sign of things to come for the Vikings this year. Du DeWitt and Fallowville bring back a, a lot of seniors. DeWitt, DeWitt, I think, in fact, has 30 returning seniors. Uh, only losing the Thalen brothers, looking uh, head into the season. Uh, Corona next week looks like a formidable opponent too. They, uh, they ret return a lot of their players and uh, they were tough last year. Uh, expect them to be tough again next week out in Corona. The word around the league was about two years ago that DeWitt was kind of on the, on the downfall, maybe kind of Vikings taking over as the class of the league, but that is not the case as all, at all as the last two games they played, a 7 nothing win by DeWitt here two years ago, and then, the, of course, the overtime thriller in DeWitt last year that the Vikings prevailed in. So many more exciting games away on the Vikings' schedule this year. With, uh, after this game, the uh, Vikings do have five more remaining home games. Timeout taken by Peterson here. Timeout Every Vikings. timeout valuable at this point. With that stoppage there, you wonder why the coach and the players wouldn't be on the same page. The Vikings still have two remaining with 4.14 to go. Those are the kind of things you hate to do even when you're playing video games. Having to call that timeout when you don't exactly know what you're doing. Exactly. East Lansing, obviously at a high confidence level right now as well as they should be as they lead in this much anticipated game, 15 to nothing. Want to get someone on the books. I don't, I don't remember the last time the Vikings were shut out at home. Shut out in general, really. Well, that's the that seven, seven zero loss to do it was the last time. Right, there you go, right there. That game, that was a slappy game, though, in the rain. This is ideal conditions. Tony Police with a touchdown pass with about six minutes to go. That was a classic for sure. So it always seems to have those passing plays up their sleeve for the, the, the final quarter, as they, as they did last year. Tough 
time for Peterson out there, but the more snaps he gets, gets the better he'll be, without question. First and 10 now, Peterson drops back to pass. Guns up the sideline, looking for Brian McIntosh. Fine catch by McIntosh, he hauls it in, came back for it. And that brings the Viking crowd alive. As play gets up to the 41-yard line. Vikings <laughs> will go no huddle here. Are running the two-minute offense. Looks like a possible, uh, almost a push there from the East Lansing defender in to the ball there for Brent McIntosh to uh, make the catch. Refs seem determined to let the players play this one out tonight. Pick up of 26 on the last play. Peterson back to pass. Ball underthrown, intended for Brian McIntosh again. Here comes the replay here. You can see, push down into the receiver. Oh, actually, probably helped to make the catch there. Hazlitt will take it at this point, any way they can get it. 3.52 left in the game, second down and 10 here. Peterson brings it into the huddle. Vikings need an, another big pass play, gain some ground, 30 or 40 yards is a must. This time this Brent McIntosh split out too, Greg. Snaps dropped, fumble, doesn't look good. East Lansing, I believe East Lansing has the ball, and they do. Turnovers have been the story up and down the field for the Vikings tonight, and they have had them at the most inopportune times. And that's why we're at where we're at right now with East Lansing taking over in Viking territory, up 15 points to 3.45 to go. There's your inexperienced quarterback right there, Matt Peterson. Hey, a little miscommunication there with Chris Thornton in the center. Uh, it's the first time they've ever worked together here, so. This is, this is like the toughest, like, opening season opponent the Vikings have had. It was traditionally Jackson Northwest and teams like that, and all of a sudden, opening night, here you have the East Lansing Trojans. Hey, so obvi obviously, you like to get a few games under your belt before you play them, but they've been the better team tonight, without question. Definitely gives uh, the Vikings some ex a lot of experience and a lot of character here. Uh, I, going into Corona, they're going to have to be watching out next week. The Vikings, uh, they're going to come out with a lot of heart. to play an opponent with uh, almost 350 more kids to draw from. But those things happen, and they happen in the playoffs. You got to play them. Well, if things go according to what many spectators say, this might not be the last time that this, these two teams meet this year. As we saw last year in the playoffs, I'm sure the Vikings would like another chance at East Lansing. Vikings take a timeout there. They have one remaining. Stop the clock with 2:55. Vikings have got they've got tough home games against Dewitt, Fowlerville, and uh, Harlan gave them a run for their money last year. Game uh, a run uh, down in Harlan last year. Uh, Vikings uh, pulling through in the second half there, but it, it's a tough game. You got to win sixth in the high school to play to get in the playoffs. Vikings got a tough road ahead of them. Wanted to clarify that that. Uh, one on the back of Coach Ford's t-shirt stands for the one state title that has us looking to achieve. Of course, going to the Silver Dome four seasons ago and a playoff qualifier every year since. Still looking for that one state title. And you, you got to give those, uh, those two teams, uh, the 98 team and the 99 team, a lot of credit. They had to make the playoffs. When you, some teams who went 9-0 didn't even ever get in. Yeah. There's always that never-ending argument of which team was better. 98 team going to the dome, but some say the 99 team had more like raw talent than any other team. So, 99 team, they had they had that game game during the day in Stevens the Lakeshore. Uh, I remember it well. Bad memories, bad memories. As East Lansing brings the ball close to the 30 yard line of Hazlitt, and the Vikings will spend their last time out. <laughs> Fourth down for the Trojans. Might see him pooch it deep here. Just to pin the Vikings back even deeper. Well, 
had troubles in the past with uh, the, the bigger schools, the uh, Charlotte in the first round of the playoffs a couple years ago, East Lansing last year in the playoffs. They, uh, the, school, the schools who have a, a, a larger pool to, pool to draw from have, uh, have definitely had the, uh, the advantage. There's now a class act by the East Lansing fans with a chance of overrated to the Vikings. <laughs> Gotta love high school football. Let's just hope that ha ha Hasler fans don't respond with uh, anything uh, too immature for these East Lansing folks. <laughs> That's now Pitts under center. And that is number 25. Preston Jones strikes again. Touchdown, Trojans. Cuts through the middle, and that will do it. Same play as uh, they scored their last touchdown on. Jones comes around from the... Uh, on the right on, uh, on the right side of the quarterback there runs around goes through the left side between the center and the guard puts it in the end zone winning the extra point now East Lansing leads 21 to nothing and the scoreboard is going to reflect a one-sided game really for a majority of the game the Vikings were in the contest couple of late scores here by East Lansing have just iced it. Extra point is good. Here's the instant, here's the play of the last game. You see, comes around right there. Virtually untouched again as he, as he plows right through the middle. Same play as he scored on last time. And he can just walk that one right in the end zone. Well, if anyone thought the Vikings were going to have an easy time this year, walked every victory, those thoughts are put to rest now as they trail opening night now 22 to nothing. It's definitely the, uh, the most lopsided loss the Vikings have had uh, since the, the, uh, the Silverdome appearance against Menominee, where they were only able to muster six in the state championship game. The uh, longest kickoff return ever recorded in uh, high school championship history by uh, Logan Barnhart. That's right. Will it be about 96 yards? Yeah, third quarter score brought the Vikings to within 20. <laughs> McIntosh, Harney, and Everett deep for Hazlitt. Amazing effort by the Trojans tonight. You've got to give them credit. Ball muff taken there by number four, Brett Hissong. As he shakes off a couple tackles, looks like a couple shoulders out there. Finally brought down in the play by number 33, Antonio Lopez. That's that's the Brent Hissong I know. He, he's a wrestler. He fi finished uh, second place in uh, Division II last year for the Vikings, I believe, at uh, 103 or 107 was his weight class. He since then has uh, beefed up, but uh, he's definitely one of the Vikings' premier wrestlers. Showed his tough guy moves there, that's for sure. Vikings take over first and 10 on their own 18 as they trail by 22. Just under two and a half minutes remaining in the game. That's give is up the middle. That's number 35, Brian McIntosh. Nice carry, good enough for a Vikings first down. Looks like a... Uh, Clock will stop while they move the chains at the 30-yard line. East Lansing is... Uh, knows they've got the game in the bag here. They're not playing a uh, very solid defense. They're uh, taking their uh, sweet time here to get that play off. They're gonna have too many men on the field here for the Trojans, yep. There's the flag. Yep. Free play for Vikings and... They're gonna need that free play too. That's for sure, as the ball was intended for number 21, Matt Harney. Peterson led him a little too far there. Coach Abuski talking with Harney. Maybe Harney might have run, ran a wrong route there. Those kind of, those kind of plays like their illegal substitution there uh, for uh, East Lansing. Uh, too many men on the field. I, even though they are up by 22 with uh, less than three minutes to go in the uh, fourth quarter, those are, the thing that, those are the things that get coaches real upset. 
can't give enough effort with two minutes left to go in the game. Uh, let also everybody remember this will be the last year for the Ingham County League. As uh, obviously this is not an Ingham County League game, but uh, they will be playing for the last Ingham County League championship this year. Peterson out the pass. He has a receiver. And that's caught. That's number nine, Matt Nelson. His first catch of the evening. Brings up a first and ten for Hazlitt. 209 remaining. Here comes the replay here. Uh, well, I guess, uh, I guess that's all you're going to get on the replay there. Uh, oh, here, here we go. Peterson rolls out to his right. The left handed quarterback hits number nine, Matt Nelson. Oh, the basketball player there with some pretty soft hands. With his uh, size, definitely Matt Nelson might want to be looked upon in future games. He seems to be a prime target for Matt Peterson. Give up the middle there. He, That's number 35, Brian McIntosh. Pick up the, of about a yard. The new league uh, next year, the, uh, the Capital Area Activities Conference, will uh, merge the A.M. County League minus... Perry and Portland, they will be heading to the Mid-Michigan B. Uh, the Capital Circuit, which is uh, Okemos, Mason, Charlotte, those teams. And then the Capital Area Conference, which is the Lansing Schools, East Lansing, Holt, Grand Ledge. Peterson rolling out here. We've got number nine, Matt Nelson, open. And Nelson's taken out at the 45-yard line. So the Vikings putting together a nice little drive here with a minute to go. Begs the question, where was Matt Nelson earlier in the game as he's proved to be a very solid target here. Here comes the replay up. Peterson rolls to his left this time. Sides up the defender, throws it out to Matt Nelson. He's a big frame, nice soft hands, puts it right in there for him. You got height and hands. You can definitely make it as a receiver. And Matt Nelson has both of those. Now with a minute 12 to go, Peterson's under center. As the reverse give to McIntosh, he's got some room. He takes it, cuts it back in. That'll bring up another close to a first down as he's at the 34-yard line. McIntosh a little slow to get up there. Cause for concern by the Vikings sideline. Uh, the three conferences will merge. Okay. We have a replay coming up. All right, okay. Peterson with the give. I believe that's to Brian McIntosh on that one. Picks up maybe a yard, yard and a half. It'll be second and nine. The three, the three conferences will uh, merge into uh, one mega conference with three different divisions, almost the same as uh, previously uh, aligned. Pass is complete to number seven, Joe Austin. Be a first down for the Vikings inside the 15 with 34 seconds left in the game, but there is a flag. Definitely tell the uh, the Trojans are uh, playing a little lackadaisical here, knowing they uh, have the game in the bag. Uh, probably will frustrate uh, Coach Jeff Smith a little bit if they uh, give up a touchdown or any sort of points here. So with this new conference, does that mean we might see a Hazlitt Okemos game in the future? Okemos is going to be playing in Division uh, Division One with uh, with uh, pretty much all the uh, Capital Area Conference teams, which is East Lansing and the much bigger schools. Okay. And uh, Waverly will move down and play in Division Two, and Hazlitt will play in Division Three. Here's the replay. Nice catch there by uh, Joe Austin. This little passing attack might work a little bit better for Hazlitt. They uh, come out and throw the ball a little bit more often. Gianni Farrako there with nice coverage too. However, Austin cut to the outside and was able to haul it in. Brings up first and 10 for the Vikings. Ball on about the 16 yard line. Peterson rolling out here. Pass low to Joe Austin. He did bring it in however, and he's out of bounds at the 10 yard line with 30 seconds even left in the game. Peterson's finally starting to connect some passes here. And this is good. This is a good sign for next week at Corona. Matt Peterson starting to find his targets. Obviously too little, too late tonight. However, it is a positive sign for the Vikings. But with, it, with, it, with the, uh, the 
addition of the, the new teams that Hazlitt will be playing will be Lansing Catholic Central and Lakewood. Essentially, will replace Perry and Portland. Ne neither school has a uh, very uh, predominant football program, so it, it essentially will become the Ingham County League with two different teams. Peterson rolling out there. He finds his man, Matt Nelson. Touchdown, Vikings. Peterson to Nelson, they connect on the 11-yard pass play, and the Vikings refuse to go quietly with 23 seconds left. They put their first score on the board. Here's, here's the replay. Peterson rolls out to his right, sees Nelson open in the end zone, big target, throws across his body. Not the way Peterson wants to be going. Nelson catches the ball just outside the end zone, dives in for the score. See the Vikings look like they're going to go for two here, and they are. And we see 23 seconds to go. Nothing to lose. I just see Peterson rolling out. He has a man. That's number seven, Joe Austin. Converts the two points. So the Vikings put two, put eight points up on the board there as they come down the field in a span of about a minute 40. The Vikings prove that that they can do it in a short amount of time. Let's take a look at that two-point conversion again. Here it is. Peterson rolls out to his left this time. He's got two receivers wide open in the end zone. He throws to Joe Austin. Joe makes the easy catch. Almost drops it, but comes up with it. East Lansing looks to await a forthcoming onside kick. Wouldn't be surprised if the Vikings... Uh, it here on sides, but with 23.9 seconds left, the only thing they can do is get a respectable score. It's a shame for that last Jones touchdown. 15 days is a lot different than 22 to 8. Look for the onside here coming from Zilch. No, nope, he's going to kick it deep. long. Probably unexpected there for the Trojans. They got, their, they got their hands unit in the game, though. David Harris brings it up to the 26-yard line. And that's going to do it as East Lansing is going to take a knee.